This is Essential Elements, page 24, number 87, Scale Warm-Up. This piece is part of the Performance Spotlight page and is meant to be a warm-up to prepare to play the other pieces. If we look through this, we'll notice that it is just a D major scale up followed by a D major scale down. I'm noting the key signature at the beginning also indicates that I'm in D major because it shows that F sharp and C sharp. I'm in 4-4 four, four on my time signature, meaning I have four beats per measure, and the quarter note gets one beat. And as I look through the rhythms, it looks pretty straightforward to me, with the exception of measure four and measure eight. That has a run-pony rhythm, run-pony being a quarter note followed by two eighth notes, followed by a half note where we're gonna have to hold that note for two beats. Because this is just a D major scale, I think we can skip just these singing or note names and we'll go right to plucking. Let's try plucking through this one first. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, Second line, D, D, sharp, sharp, B, B, A, A, E, E. If the rhythms got you tripped up there or something else did, spend a moment and review that before you go on to bowing it. Let's bow through this one now. I have my good bow hold. My thumb has been outwards. I'm going to make sure I'm on my bowing highway and bowing straight lines. Here we go. One, two, ready, and... in preparation for all the rest of the pieces on this page. This is number 88, Frère Jacques. Frère Jacques is French for Brother Jack or Brother John, and it's a familiar tune. You may recognize it as we start to play it. If I start to look through this piece, I notice a few things. First, I notice my key signature. I see the two sharps at the beginning of the piece, which indicates that I'm in D major. I also notice my time signature is two, four. The two on top indicates that I have two beats per measure. I'm only gonna count to two before I go back to one. And the four on the bottom indicates that a quarter note is equivalent to one beat. I have a tempo marking of moderato, which just means a moderate or medium tempo. This piece is also a round, where one group could start, and then a little bit into the piece, a second group starts, and the piece sounds nice with the two groups playing at different times. Those are indicated by the circle one and the circle two. I'm just going to play this piece once through normally, or twice through with the repeat, but I'm not going to play this round because I'm only one person. 
We have to be very aware of rhythms in this piece. We're going to use both quarter notes and half notes as well as our eighth notes. One thing that can really help us is subdividing. That's where we count in our head, especially we count like the eighth notes instead of just quarter notes. So in our mind, we're thinking one and two and not just one, two. That's going to prepare us for those eighth notes coming up later on in the piece, as well as help us keep track and keep steady throughout the quarter notes and half notes. Let's start by singing or playing or speaking through our note names. So I'm going to start by singing. Ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, and D, E, sharp, D, D, E, sharp, D, sharp, G, I, sharp, G, I, on some of the challenges of this piece. One of them is keeping those eighth notes steady. They get a little fast sometimes depending on how we've been playing through this. Let's review those uh, first four measures in line two where it goes A, B, A, G, sharp, D. I'm going to sing it but I'm also going to move my left hand fingers which can help me prepare for this piece to play. Here we go, one and two and line two, ready, go. A, B, A, G sharp, D, A, B, A, G sharp, D. Try that one more time. You're gonna move your left hand fingers while you speak or sing the note names. One, two, ready, and A, B, A, G sharp, D, A, B, A, G sharp, D. We're thinking through that rhythm of one and two and three. Whoa, sorry, not three. One and two and one, two. One and two and one, two. Even I'm not perfect, but we are in two, four, so we only have one and two. Let's try to pluck those measures before we pluck the whole thing. So this is the first four measures of line two. It starts on the A with the eighth notes. One and two and ready and go. not too fast, nice and steady. Counting, subdividing in your head will really help. Here we go. Plucking through Frere Jaca. One, two, one, and ready, go. One, If that's going well 
for you, you're going to be ready to bow it. If that was a challenge, pause the video here, practice plucking through it a few more times, or rewind the video and play through it plucking with me again. We're going to bow it now, once without the music. Um, there is the repeat. I'm playing it once through for the sake of time. When we bow it, however, I will play the repeat. I will play it twice through. So this is Frere Jaca bowing twice through. Here we go. One and two and one and ready, go. Hear me take that repeat. Let's give it a try. 88. Frere Jacques, round. There are four beats in this count. So two measures. Two, one, and. sharp marked at the beginning of this piece. 
I'm also noticing that I'm in 4-4 four, four time. I have four beats per measure, and the quarter note gets one beat. And I have a tempo marking of allegro, which means fast. As I look through this piece, I'm looking for patterns. This piece is very patterned. And I notice right away that I have the same rhythmic pattern that repeats very frequently. I call this rhythmic pattern, where it's one quarter note followed by two eighth notes, the run pony pattern. Because I say run, pony, run, pony. I use that word phrase to help me play through those rhythms. So run, pony, run, pony, run, pony, run. Pony. That's a quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. So as I look through this A line, I notice that that's pretty much all I play all the way through. The very last measure, right by the repeat, which I'm also noticing there's a repeat in this piece, the very last measure doesn't quite complete the full run pony. Take a look at that measure. I see my quarter, that'd be run. I see two eighth notes, pony. And then I see one quarter note, which is one more run, but there's a rest afterwards. So run, pony, run, rest. So that measure is a little different. From there, I'm taking a look at the notes. And I notice that the notes stay pretty straightforward. So let's start by singing through this piece. We are not going to take the repeat when we sing our note names just for the sake of time. But when we play it, we will take the repeat. If you want to, you can also move your left hand along with our singing to practice your finger patterns so that you're ready for them. Here we go. One, two, and ready, and sharp, 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 G, 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 sharp, 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 E, 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 E. Line two, sharp, 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 G, 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 sharp, 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 E, 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 D, 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 rest. And from there we would repeat, but for the sake of time in this video, I'm not going to. One thing I love to do as a musician is look for patterns. We already just discussed the rhythmic pattern being all run ponies. But if we look at the notes, there's also a pattern here as well. In almost all of the measures, take a look at the notes. Do they stay the same throughout the whole measure? For almost all of the measures, the answer is yes, they do. The first measure, the whole measure, is F sharp. The second measure, the whole measure, is G. So I could even think of groupings of run ponies. So each measure has two run ponies in it, quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. So I could count to myself run ponies on a single note. So I could say, I have in this piece, this pattern, is I play two run ponies on F sharp. Run, pony, run, pony. And then I play two run ponies on G. Run, pony, run, pony. And then I go back to two run ponies on F sharp. Run, pony, run, pony. And then the fourth measure, it's all E. Run, pony, run, pony. So as you're reading through music, it's sometimes really helpful to try and identify these patterns. It can make the reading easier and it can make you more fluent and proficient on the piece faster. So let's try plucking through this. You can read the notes, you can also be reading for the patterns. Here we go. One, two, and ready, and go. Run, pony, 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 run. Measure five and run. Pony, 
only measure that is different than that idea of two run ponies in each measure is measure seven. If we take a look at measure seven, I see that the measure starts on F sharp with a full run pony on F sharp, but then it moves to E for the second run pony. So that one's different. We need to make sure we're aware of it. If you struggled with the plucking, pause the video here, practice plucking it a few more times, then come back and we'll play it with the bow. Okay, let's try the line A of Biled and Cabbage down with, with the repeat with our bow. Check your bow hold, make sure your posture is all set. Here we go, cellos, remember cello base. Your elbow should be above your cello, it shouldn't be hiding behind like this, it should be up and above. One, two, and ready, here we go. then come back to playing it with me and the music at that tempo. Now very briefly we're going to look at line B. So that's the music we haven't looked at. It says B at the beginning of each stanza of the music. So line B I notice is all the run pony pattern still. Da, 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 da. And if I look really carefully I start looking over all of line B and I realize it is all just the note A. The whole thing is just run ponies on the note A. So that's pretty straightforward. We just have to keep our eyes moving so that we know what measure we're on and we know when it's time to stop playing run ponies on the note A. One thing that's really cool, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on us going through that line. I'm pretty confident that you're able to play run ponies on the note A. We'll go through it once just to be sure. So we'll do that and then I'll show you the cool thing. So. Let's just bow through, no repeat, just once through all of the run ponies that we have, all of these measures on an open A. Here we go. One, two, ready, and... <laughs> Ponies, pony, run, pony, run. That will make it easier to bow. 
Now the cool thing I can show you, and this works, it's easier for uh, our violins, violas, and cellos, but basses, you're welcome to give it a try as well, it's just a little more challenging for you, is if you have a really great left hand posture and you can tunnel really well, you could actually play both of these lines at the same time. It's challenging, but it's doable. You have to tunnel really well where those fingers are standing up nice and tall so they're not touching the A string. If they touch the A string, you get a very high squeak like this. We don't want that noise. But if you're really tall, G is a little harder. I have to really round my finger tall, but you can kind of play both lines at the same time. You don't have to, but if you wanted to try something challenging and fun, I wanted to present this option. We're going to play through Bile and Cabbage Down one more time. You can play line A, you can play line B, or if you want, you can try and play both lines together. We will take the repeat this time. Two, ready, and... tempo, getting comfortable with the different run pony patterns, and maybe even trying to play both parts, we would call it playing as a double stop if you think you're up to it. <laughs> 